Hello, my name is Rob Mitchell and this is Maker.io. In today's video, we're going to be learning about how to get the Arduino IDE to work with the Adafruit Hazard 32. But first, what is the Adafruit Hazard 32? So it could be argued that one of the biggest renovations in IoT hobby projects was the ESP8266, which is a 32-bit um, internet-enabled uh, SOC, a system on chip. And these things go for a few bucks each. And that makes them an incredibly sort of hobby friendly area, you know, because it, they're, so, they're so cheap. A lot of these other Wi-Fi modules that were on the market before were quite expensive uh, and uh, were only cheap in bulk and were very awkward to use, like very tiny pinouts or no pinouts at all. Uh, and a lot of the time you were only using the actual ICs themselves as opposed to a nice big custom module. But the ESP8266 uh, made such a big difference with its eight simple pins, the fact that it could be programmed over UART and essentially the number of uh, hobby IoT projects just exploded. But now that we've had the ESP8266 for a good number of years now, a new uh, version has come out on the market, the ESP32, and that is essentially what the Adafruit Hazard is. It's an ESP32 module on a board that handles the uh, USB interface, that it handles the uh, control logic and all that kind of, you know, the stuff to make the chip work properly. So you can just drop it into a breadboard and use it straight away. But you can't use it on the IDE natively you have to make a few changes or one change to the ide and then you can start using it and luckily for us like other arduino projects that are libraries that are already made for the esp32 range of devices that make using it trivial so instead of having to worry about the intricate registers and the difficult parts you can go straight into coding your own projects and getting a wi-fi system working now a lot of other esp32 and other iot SOC devices out there will use uh, tend to use the very generic uh, communication devices such as the CH340 and most computers will recognize these immediately as you put them in but the uh, but the Adafruit Hazard 32 doesn't it uses a very specific chip uh, can't remember what it is off the top of my head but you can see the download link for the driver here so you have to install that before you can use it then the next thing you're going to need to do is to point your IDE to the repository that holds all the board information. So basically what this means is we go into file under preferences and then we can add another URL to the boards or the alternative boards box and this allows the IDE to look for other boards on the internet. So once you have made that change to the preference uh, window you need to go ahead and then download the ESP32 range of boards and to do this all you need to do is go under board manager and then go to uh, the search box and just look up ESP32 and there really should only be one result and you can go ahead and select that result and then click install and this will install a wide range of ESP32 modules and the reason why it does a very wide range is because despite the fact that there may be lots of different ESP32 boards in the market they all basically work the same and then once the ESP32 library has been downloaded and installed which it should do automatically you're done. At this point, you can go ahead and start making programs for the ESP32 range of devices, including the Adafruit Hazard. So that's all we have time for today in this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.